Thank you for joining us. We're thrilled that you're interested in becoming a trained volunteer for Project Wingspan, and we hope you enjoy this webinar series. My name is Amber Barnes, and I am the Wildlife Conservation Ecologist with the Pollinator Partnership and the Native Plant Materials Coordinator for Project Wingspan. We'll also be joined by Elizabeth Kaufman in a separate video in this series. Elizabeth is Pollinator Partnership's plant ecologist who is also serving as the Pollinator Habitat Coordinator for Project Wingspan. In this presentation, I'm going to talk to you about the Project Wingspan initiative and provide you with the background information to give you a better understanding of what this innovative conservation project is all about. In our next video in the series, we'll review our protocol and teach you how to properly collect seed from the landscape. This presentation is a portion of a multi-part webinar-driven online training module. In future videos within this training module, we'll introduce you to our seed collection and data protocols and best management practices, get you acquainted with our target plant species and give you tips for IDing them, and finally, walk you through the Survey123 for ArcGIS app. You're welcome to take this training at your own pace whether that's binge watching them all in one day or spreading your digestion of the material out over a week. We encourage you to go at the pace that works for you. Just be sure to watch all the training videos in the series. We have two modules on our website, one that is geared toward team leads and data collectors, which will review information, protocols, and forms related to the project and train them in planning and carrying out a seed collection event in order to standardize the seed collection process and ensure responsible collection and data integrity. The other module is focused more simply on communicating the best management practices of harvesting seed to those who are not interested in taking a leadership role in the collection team, but still want to help as a seed collection volunteer and learn how to be good stewards when doing so. Please choose the module that best fits your level of interest and skill in participating in this project. The module you're currently watching is that designed for team leads and data collectors. If you're curious about this role, we encourage you to keep following along with the videos in this module. However, if that's not the level of participation in which you're interested, please switch over to the seed collection volunteer module instead. Thank you so much for your interest in helping us improve the landscape for our wild neighbors. We're thrilled to partner with you on this endeavor. Now, let's get started with the training. First, I'd like to share a little bit about P2's background. We're a science-based nonprofit conservation organization, and over the past 21 years, we've worked in collaboration with multiple stakeholders on a variety of programs to support the health of pollinators and their habitats. Through our many collaborative efforts, we have helped create and enhance tens of thousands of acres of habitat throughout the United States, Canada, and beyond. We believe in the Big Tent philosophy and collaborate with scientists, researchers, conservationists, government officials, dedicated volunteers, and others to keep pushing progress forward on pollinator issues. We believe that together, we find real solutions to many of today's complex conservation challenges. And whether it's trainings like the one you're participating in today, a school garden kit that gets ordered, an outreach event staffed by P2 staff or volunteers, or interpretive signage near habitat, educating about pollinators and what you can do to help them is one of our top priorities. P2 conducts true science and believes in making sure that actions are backed by science. And our in-house researchers and staff work to provide credible, authentic, and useful guides and information, which many of which can be found on our website. And P2 works with policymakers on both sides of the aisle and advocates for funding to support pollinator protection. So why so much focus on pollinators? Because it's clear from research that pollinators are in decline. There's evidence for decline in honeybees, bumblebees, birds, butterflies, and insects in general. In fact, declines of some bee species have become so pronounced that the United States has had to list them as endangered under the Endangered Species Act, the ESA, 
for the first time in 2016 and 2017, including the Rusty Patch Bumblebee. This project fo focuses mainly on addressing the needs of the monarch butterfly and the Rusty Patch Bumblebee. As you may know, the iconic monarch butterfly and its spectacular migration are in jeopardy. Their North American numbers have suffered a steep decline of approximately 90% over the past two decades. And in 2014, the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service was petitioned to protect the monarch butterfly under the Endangered Species Act, with a listing decision expected for December 2020. Like the monarch, the rusty patch bumblebee was a common species 20 years ago, with a range across 28 states and two Canadian provinces which you can see in gray on the displayed map. The Rusty Patch Bumblebee populations have also seen a swift decline since the 1990s, which earned it placement in the endangered species list in 2017, with the distinction of becoming the first bee in the contiguous 48 states to be declared endangered. The species has now only been observed as a few small patches of populations across what is estimated to be only 0.1% of its historical range. So it's become clear that in, court, in order to help improve our landscape for pollinators which support our healthy ecosystems and food security, everyone and every landscape is needed. And so we embrace the all hands on a deck approach. And so large or small, we need it all. Habitat islands and corridors are vital. Pollinators don't care about borders. Um, increased floral diversity means increased biodiversity. And planting these native plants can also help restoration efforts succeed and support these local rare plant communities. So to help address this need for quality habitat and restored connectivity to the landscape, Pollinator Partnership has been working on numerous large and small scale efforts across North America and that's why you're watching this today, to learn lifelong skills that will help you impact your local community and participate in this unique and innovative project that will help enhance tens of thousands of acres of habitat across the project region. Volunteers like you make impactful programs like these possible. And for that, we cannot thank you enough for your contributions. The main goal of this project is to increase monarch, rusty patch bumblebee, and other imperiled pollinator habitat throughout the landscape. We're accomplishing this through um, several means, engaging with public land managers and private land stewards, educating land managers on multiple ways they can enhance their land for monarchs, rusty patch bumblebees, and other pollinators, establishing and training volunteers uh, to collect native seed from the landscape, and working with land stewards to secure and enhance 15,625 acres of monarch habitat. So how did we get here? Well, Pollinators Partnership started a program in 2015 called Monarch Wings Across Ohio, which worked with a variety of partners across multiple land use types to create and research monarch habitat throughout Northeast Ohio. The success of that project led P2 to see if we could work with other groups to create monarch habitat on a larger scale. A grant request was sent to the National Fish and Wildlife Foundation, and we received funding for a large-scale, eco-regional approach to creating monarch habitat involving partners throughout five states. And that came to be known as Monarch Wings Across the Eastern Broadly Forest. And uh, Monarch Wings Across the Eastern Broadleaf Forest kicked off in fall 2016 with the overarching goal to increase monarch habitat within the Eastern Broadleaf Forest Continental Province, focusing in the states of Missouri, Arkansas, Illinois, Indiana, and Ohio. And there were really two sides of this program. Uh, one side was training and developing a seed collection network to generate regionally appropriate native plant materials for the project. And the other side was identifying, securing, and enhancing acres of monarch habitat throughout the region through training and resource distribution. We're grateful to the support of the partnerships of the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, Partners for Fish and Wildlife, multiple state departments of natural resources, 
the refuges, wildlife areas, and volunteers, and all of our other core and satellite partners that helped make this effort such a success. With the help of this multitude of project partners and the amazing and dedicated team of volunteers, Pollinator Partnership was able to meet or exceed nearly all of our goals. Here's a quick snapshot of what we were able to accomplish over the two and a half year grant period. P2 State Leads and our other core partners developed a robust seed collection protocol to help volunteers learn how to identify and collect seed from our target list of native wildflowers. And we held trainings across the project states and created an online platform to reach those who couldn't attend an in-person workshop. As a result, over two years, our amazing 327 volunteers um, were able to harvest 368 seed collections, which ended up being about 100 pounds of cleaned seed and 11,482 seedlings were propagated. And those seeds and plugs generated from these volunteer efforts had an estimated value of $71,012. P2 worked with project partners throughout the five state focus area to identify, secure, and enhance over 27,000 acres of monarch habitat throughout the region. We provided on-site consultations and held five land manager trainings throughout the project states. Our seven part webinar series is now available online for anyone seeking to learn how they can manage their landscape, small or large, for monarchs and other pollinators. All of this work resulted in tangible, on-the-ground results to improve the quality and connectivity of the landscape for monarchs. Um, 44 projects received plugs from, and seed from the volunteer-generated collection efforts free of charge. An additional 21 projects received funds to enhance their habitat through seed, plugs, and invasive species control. With monarch wings across the eastern Broadleaf forest wrapping up and these incredible achievements under our belt, P2 applied to NIFWIF for two more short-term grants under the new title of Project Wingspan. With this project, we're building upon the foundations laid by our previous efforts and expanding our reach to new project states of Michigan, Minnesota, Pennsylvania, and Wisconsin, and including the rusty patch bumblebee as well as um, as a target species as well. Now, I'm going to tell you a little bit about our goals for Wingspan and how we plan to achieve them. Being a nine state project, we've got a lot of partners. Uh, there's rep here's representation of our core group, but there are many others who have and will continue to contribute to the success of this program. As I noted a moment ago, Project Wingspan is being carried out through two staggered National Fish and Wildlife Foundation grants. Phase one of the project started in December 2018 and includes seed collection and redistribution efforts in Illinois, Indiana, Michigan, Ohio, Pennsylvania, and Wisconsin. And will conclude with the distribution of volunteer harvested plant materials early in 2021 over the winter for seed and spring for plugs. Phase two of the project started in December 2019. Through this grant, we will be continuing seed collection and redistribution efforts in Illinois, Michigan, and Wisconsin, and we'll be expanding the project into the states of Arkansas and Minnesota. Phase two will conclude with the distribution of volunteer harvested plant materials in early 2022 over the winter for seed and spring for plugs. There are several goals to this project, and the first that I will talk about today is establishing a regional seed collecting program. We're working with existing collection programs to create a temporary coordinated regional seed collection and distribution network. The skills that our volunteers learn can then be applied to other local efforts and support local conservation capacity in future work. Regionally specific milkweed and other forage plant seed is commercially unavailable in large quantities within much of the country and can be prohibitively expensive for some projects, even when available. 
Our dedicated volunteers are collecting regionally adapted seed from the landscape, which will then be used for enhancing pollinator habitat throughout the Midwest and Great Lakes region. Seed collection activities will be focused in eight states, Illinois, Indiana, Wisconsin, Michigan, Minnesota, Arkansas, Ohio, and Pennsylvania. Seed collection and distribution zones within each state have been identified and established utilizing a mixture of eco-regional and provisional seed zone boundaries. All native plant materials generated from the seed collecting efforts will be redistributed within the same state collection zone in order to maintain genetic variability and resilience across milkweed and forage plant populations and assist with the goal of securing and enhancing 15,625 acres of habitat across the Midwest. Our second goal is to provide technical assistance and training for seed collection and habitat enhancement, which is why you're watching this today. In order to ensure well-planned, responsible collections are being conducted, we have developed standardized seed collection protocols that will be carried out throughout the region. We are making sure to train our volunteers in plant identification and proper collection methods. We want our volunteers to be confident in their abilities and have all the resources needed to make successful, responsibly conducted seed collection. P2 has also created plant profiles for each of the target species we're focusing on. These profiles cover identification characteristics potential confusing species, and have several photos for guidance. These are available online for you to download. You can save this on your computer, uh, but it's also mobile friendly and can be stored as a PDF for easy access on your phone. While supplies last, each team lead will be given a printed copy of the plant profiles for use in the field. We've also put together a separate plant identification video in this training webinar series, which will be led by Elizabeth Kaufman. While the training series you're currently watching is focused on volunteer seed collection efforts, supporting public and private land managers by providing education and resources on best management practices, or BMPs, is imperative to enhancing and managing native habitat. To reach the objective of providing guidance on BMPs, we will be engaging with land managers through a series of technical training workshops. Further information on scheduling in-person workshops in Arkansas, Illinois, Michigan, Minnesota, and Wisconsin will be made available once it can be determined due to COVID-19. Until then, we have a series of online webinars. You can find the seven-part Habitat Creation and Management series housed on pollinator.org through the Resources tab drop-down menu or through the link provided on the screen. This series highlights presentations given by conservation authorities renowned for their experience in monarch conservation, habitat creation, and long-term management and covers topics ranging from site selection and preparation to designing seed mixes and employing different planting methodologies and gives a comprehensive review of management actions needed in the early stages of restoration efforts through long-term management actions and techniques. And you can join the Pollinator Action Team to be notified of when these trainings are scheduled, as well as other activities and resources that Pollinator Partnership has available. Our third goal is to enhance and secure 15,625 acres of long-term habitat. Habitat enhancement will be achieved through directly providing native plant material awards and through providing technical guidance on current best management practices, improved management techniques, learned through in-person and online educational workshops that we just talked about. The goal of securing long-term habitat will be achieved through securing signed habitat management agreement letters with public and private land managers and landowners committed to employing best management practices and long-term conservation efforts to support monarchs, the Carner blue butterflies, rusty patch bumblebees, and other imperiled pollinators. 
we have a program flyer for the preliminary online habitat survey that's being circulated and we greatly appreciate you sharing information about that aspect of the program. To identify pollinator habitat across the target region, we created a preliminary online survey and application for land stewards. This, this data will help provide a better understanding of where pollinator habitat exists across the landscape. Public land managers and private landowners with at least one acre of land who are committed to long-term habitat conservation are invited to participate. Once sites have been vetted and verified, they will become partners in this landscape scale effort. Some sites will be eligible for native plant material awards. This includes the seed that you're collecting, as well as plug plants grown from those collections. While not all sites will receive plant materials from this project, everyone who participates in the habitat survey will receive information on additional state-specific programs that can also provide resources to help them enhance the habitat areas they are creating and or managing. Our habitat coordinator, Elizabeth Kaufman, is collaborating with our core partners, satellite partners, and survey respondents to identify, enhance, and secure these 15,625 acres. Please visit the link on the screen to learn more about how your acreage can get counted and apply for enhancement materials. After reviewing the survey, any further questions should be directed to your state coordinator. So what are our collection goals? Well, we aim to collect at least 1,550 seed collections across our eight state seed collection region. And Wingspan seeks to target common native species that are either monarch larval hosts, such as milkweed, or high quality pollinator, pollen and nectar resources for the rusty patch bumblebee, monarch, and other imperiled species. These are the 34 target species native throughout the Midwest and Great Lakes region that we'll be focusing on. With a bloom chart to illustrate, we chose species that are blooming and providing pollen and nectar resources throughout the growing season to fuel the monarch's migration and sustain resident imperiled pollinators while also providing much needed host plants for monarchs and other species of Lepidoptera. Many of these species range throughout all of our target states, but some have a more limited distribution and will not be collected in certain states. This information is provided in the Plant Profiles and Seed Collection Manual and Plant Identification Webinar. So how'd we get there? Well, we used the USDA Plants and BONAP, which is the Biotic, Biota of the North America program websites, as well as other resources to ensure wide distribution range throughout all of our eight state region. We also ensured that the plants covered spring, summer, and fall blooming species to support each part of the monarch's migration and ensure that local residents, such as the rusty patch bumblebee, have something to forage all growing season. This list was also cross-referenced against regional weedy invasive lists. We carried out numerous rounds of vetting with partners and botanical advisors, as well as ground truth the list by consulting local experts throughout our target states. And we considered the habitat needs of both the monarch, the rusty patch bumblebee, and other imperiled pollinators, which they need at different times of the year and various stages of their development. So what's the process? Well, here's a flow chart to give an overview of what will happen with the seed collections. First, our collection teams will go out and collect seed. Those seeds will then be sent to Mason State Nursery for cleaning, inspection, and temporary storage. Once we're ready for the plantings, some of the seed will be grown out into plugs, while others will be distributed back into the landscape as seed. Our pollinator habitat coordinator will evaluate our plant materials and oversee their distribution back onto the landscape with the help of our many planning partners. So if you're interested in participating as a certified team lead, data collector, or seed collection volunteer, but have not been able to attend one of our in-person trainings throughout the regions, no worries. Uh, you can visit our training website, pictured here on the screen, and get started today.
We've set up a simple six-step online training process to prepare you for collections in the field. Step two is to watch our training webinars. So if you watch this, our seed collection protocol and data collection webinar, our target plant introduction video, and the survey one, two, three for ArcGIS tutorial, you can count this as completion of step two. If you're interested in contributing to this conservation project, it's vital that you complete the other steps of the training, including emailing me, Amber Barnes, your completed volunteer waiver, and filling out the contact form. We won't know that you've completed the training if you don't fill out the contact form on our webpage. With that information, we can send you your official Project Wingspan digital training certificate and get you in touch with your state coordinator to get started. Through this project, we have created several materials to ensure that all of our collection volunteers are well prepared and conducting high quality, responsible seed collections. All these materials pictured here and more are housed on our website and available for free download. Our seed collection manual covers every aspect of conducting a seed collection event from scouting to shipping the seed. One guide is informative for all levels of participation, including team leads, data collectors, and volunteer collectors. While our team leads are well-versed in plant identification, it always helps to have a guide on hand. To accommodate this need, P2 has created plant profiles for each of the 34 target species we're focusing on in Project Wingspan. While they are not a substitute for a detailed field guide, these profiles cover ID characteristics, potential confusing species, and have several photos for guidance. We highly encourage all volunteers to download and review these profiles before heading out into the field. Team leads are there to help with any questions and will have a printed copy for use in the field. We have also posted our in-person training PowerPoint slides and target species bloom chart in the download center. And all of this is to create a rapid increase of vital pollinator habitat. We're so happy that you chose to join us today and we look forward to working with you to help the monarch, rusty patch bumblebee, and our other imperiled pollinators through this large scale effort driven by local conservation. We hope that you enjoyed learning about Project Wingspan in this first video in the training series. In our next video for team leads and data collectors, we'll go in depth into how to plan, prepare for, and carry out a seed collection event and how to collect the data we need to make sure that the plants are getting back to the right places.